I am going to be recording this session about the Oregon Conservation Partnership. Uh, so uh, this is a, a time for each of the partners to uh, just introduce themselves, give a little presentation, um, and then um, answer any questions. Um, I will probably I'll leave this slide up, but um, hopefully we'll be able to you'll be able to see at least in the top you know who the folks are the talking. Um, if you would uh, prefer that I take the slide down so there's bigger pictures of everyone, I'll, I can do that. Um, the presenters may not want that, but I don't know. Um, I'll be monitoring the chat box to make sure it's there. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, you can put it in there. Um, we are being very casual this this morning, and we we don't have a, uh, a real order yet. But I was thinking that um, Kelly from the Coalition of Oregon Land Trust could go uh, first because um, I know she has another meeting to get to, um, and then we could use go with uh, Jan Lee if that's that's fine with you, and then Vanessa from the network, um, and Jeremy from Ocean, and ending with. Uh, uh, Margan from ODA. So hopefully that works for all of you. Um, if you uh, don't uh, put no in the chat box, we're just going to go with that. So uh, Kelly, um, do you, are you ready to uh, start? Sure. Um, good afternoon, everyone. It's, I'm usually sitting um, somewhere in Portland in the Limit Valley, but today I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So it's afternoon here, even though I know it just turned noon <laughs> where you all are. Um, we've been doing COVID with my in-laws who happen to live here. and We didn't just come for the great weather. Um, my name is Kelly Beamer, and I'm the executive director of the Coalition of Oregon Land Trusts. Uh, Eric was reminding us, you know, part of when you join the world of conservation, you need a dictionary for all the acronyms. So our acronym is COLT. Um, and I guess I'll start out and uh, Jan and Jeremy and Vanessa will, will all kind of share this narrative of being part of the Oregon Conservation Partnership, which is really a statewide network of um, all of you, all of the passionate conservation professionals out there that support voluntary conservation in Oregon. That's where we meet. <laughs> um, and so we really think of ourselves as sort of the three-legged stool supporting um, efforts for watershed health, protection of working lands, um, conservation of fish and wildlife, and uh, and that three-legged stool is watershed councils, districts, and land trusts, all working to really um, implement the Oregon conservation strategy um, and our statewide goals. So there's a lot of places, you know, where we, th that beautiful um, little icon you see there with the four petals, talks about us as four distinct organizations, but there's a lot of overlap. And that place of overlap and those places of overlap are really what uh, the Oregon Conservation Partnership is. And that little icon of all of the community members climbing ladders and you see Salem there, um, <laughs> that's a, just a little symbol to represent the work we do together on advocacy, on training, on convening um, our folks. So, um, so that's, that's a little bit about the Oregon Conservation Partnership. I'll let Jan and Vanessa and Jeremy speak a little more. Um, but I, I'm in the, the world of land trusts, essentially, um, and also a few SWCDs, and in fact, growing number of SWCDs that are interested in, um, in long-term land protection using tools um, like be title acquisitions, buying land to protect it and stewarding it in uh, perpetuity, and also purchasing conservation easements, which essentially are, um, it's a way for a private landowner to protect all of the public values on their land and a SWCD or land trust holds those rights to steward that. Um, I was gonna see if I can open my uh, slide here. And um, let's see if I can share my screen. It says open system preferences. Okay. Um, oh, Eric, that might not be possible. Actually, it's making me <laughs> go into a rabbit hole. So I'm gonna. I won't share my slide. I'll just wing it um, without the without the photos. But a little bit about this: the Coalition of Oregon Land Trusts, where uh, we were established in 2011. Um, we are a statewide umbrella organization like uh, OACD 
Ocean and the Network of Oregon Watershed Councils. Um, we have uh, 23 members and um, about uh, six associate members, and we work to basically um, advocate on behalf of land conservation, so um, track state and federal policies that help support land mm -hmm. protection, um, and we build community. We bring our members together um, throughout the year for membership meetings to talk about issues that are um, important to us all, um, including everything from addressing climate change, how can we provide natural climate solutions to uh, building a diverse and equitable and inclusive community. And um, anyways, I just wanna express that I really feel lucky to work in the sector because I, um, I come to the Connect Conference and I sit down at a breakfast table and I meet friends, I meet others who are passionate about protecting Oregon's lands and serving Oregon's lands. Um, there's so much potential through our networks, our statewide networks, to build those relationships and trust and get creative to do some really impressive large-scale conservation work. Um, I think the last thing I'll say is, you know, at Colt, we're really um, we're moving into more of an inclusive membership model where our, we have quarterly meetings that will be open to um, to other uh, all groups that are interested. We have Land Camp, which is a sort of like connect um, for land conservation professionals. It'll be the, every Thursday this June virtually. <laughs> uh, we're usually meeting at a college campus and doing those trainings together, but. Um, we're gonna open enrollment in March. And so we wanna extend invitations across all of, uh, all of our communities to uh, welcome you into that work and, the, and those trainings. Um, so yeah, that's just sort of a, a broad overview of, of Colt and our membership. And you know, we have a, um, if you go to our website, you can see the statewide a map of all the different land trust geographies. Um, I'd love to just offer, you know, to facilitate connections and introductions so that you all know the geography, the, the local folks at the land trust where you are all working <laughs> and um, want to support those, facilitate those connections. Um, so that's it, Eric, this, unless anyone has any questions. Does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask Kelly? You can put them in the chat box or turn on your microphone. All right, um, Jan, would you like to go next then? Sure. Um, OACD's been around a long time. We started out in 1947. Uh, we represent the 45 soil and water conservation districts who are our members. Um, our main service is advocacy. So this session, for example, this legislative session in Oregon, we're following 87 bills uh, looking at those that impact the district. That's 87 out of the 4,000 that are out there. Uh, so we're preparing testimony and we've participated in several hearings at this point. Uh, we're looking forward to the budget hearings because that's where most of our work needs to be done this particular year. We provided three trainings for people to participate with the legislature and those are on our website so they can be accessed. Uh, we also work with the National Association of Conservation Districts. So we participate in their uh, federal regulatory and congressional issues. Um, the third part of our advocacy is rulemaking. We work with the agencies in looking at rules and protecting the district interest in those rules. Um, in addition to that, we take part in shareholder or stakeholder groups with all of the agencies to provide our input on budgets and on various legislative concepts. <clears throat> right now, we're working with DEQ on their cap and reduce rulemaking. Um, I'm one of 34 people on their rulemaking committee. And my role there is to protect natural and working lands and find some incentive programs that allow us to be part of reducing greenhouse gases. So at this point, we're looking at what are called alternative compliance instruments, which would be something like sequestration 
on private landowners' property. And emitters then could fund some of these projects to reduce their own cap um, by working with us to do so. We've had uh, two meetings that are a day long each and looking forward to four more. And we will keep reporting back to you. If you look at our website, we have a special page for that discussion. And we have a, a very vibrant section on the legislature so that you can go look at the bills we're following and give us feedback. Uh, so far as communication, we have a monthly newsletter. We send out other alerts as needed. And during COVID, for example, we did a number of webinars on how to work with uh, COVID in the background. So I attend OWEB and report back to the districts on those meetings as well as several other meetings. We have an annual meeting each year where we have a number of sessions for the districts to participate in. Um, let's see what else. We also support a number of grants. We supported the sage grouse grants with NRCS for our districts in the eastern area um, and monitoring grants for those. And we have two grants we're currently working on. One is with NRCS to tell the conservation story. I'm working with the basin team leaders to get their priorities so we can focus on different projects and prepare a booklet that we can share with legislators and others. And we're doing a brochure on value of working lands and how sequestration also would work into that. So I really value our relationship with the other partners in the Oregon Conservation Partnership because that allows, uh, that allows us to work with our 160 different entities among the four um, partners and share issues and get support from all of those groups. So with that, I uh, stand by for questions. Any questions from anyone? Quiet group today. Okay. Um, so Vanessa, would you like to uh, uh, go next? Sure. Um, first off, I apologize for coming in a little bit late. I was just coming off of a standing meeting that was one of those where it was like, oh, but wait, one more thing. <laughs> it's hard. It was hard to end that one. So I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Eric, for inviting me and being persistent. And um, I kind of came in halfway through what Jan Jan's comments were. So I'm going to take my best guess at what she covered and then um, I might cover some of the same things twice but uh, forgive me for that and then um, feel free to ask me any questions also as I go. So I'm the executive director of the Network of Oregon Watershed Councils and that represents all 57 watershed councils across the state and the purpose of our, the network we also call ourselves NAUSI. The purpose of NAUSI is to represent uh, watershed councils at the state level with elected officials and state agencies and then also to provide uh, training and value-added service that helps the councils to not have to reinvent the wheel to take advantage of networked community uh, development peer mentoring opportunities and just to provide a repository for information and guidance and best practices so that's what NAUSI is about I began this position in November 2019, and uh, I came directly onto a history of sort of a, a, a executive director who had left, and then there was an interim, and there had been kind of a gap. So when I came on, there was just some work to do to get the house in order. I'm sure you can imagine that. So um, we've been working on getting our committees up and running and getting our board uh, revamped and getting our our guidance guidance documents in order so we've been updating our bylaws like all these things that are like not very attractive to the outside world but really necessary to the inside world and so that took about a year um to to really get things going and now we're starting to cook with gas and it's really exciting so i have three committees that guide me one is the business development committee helping us to be more sustainable organization that's the least the least exciting one. 
the we have one that's the member services committee that's the meeting i just came from and that group is looking at all of the things that we offer to our watershed councils and they're helping me identify what is clunky what's not working where are there gaps and then what's our plan to address those issues so that's really exciting um, and then we have a government relations committee that guides our how we interact with elected officials and state agencies and so that committee is really helpful and we are working with OACD and with Colt and we sit in on the weekly OWEB guidance calls as well. And so basically we're looking at the bills as they drop and we are figuring out our, uh, we be, I think we have the capacity to really put together an advocacy plan for three or four bills. Um, we can't do everything. And so we have to really target specifically what we want to work on. And that's that's what's happening right now. That's the that's the work we are engaged in. So um so that's what's happening at the committee level. And then I would talk for a minute about the services that we offer. So a lot of the services that we offer are available because of our partnership with OACD and with COL and we offer them in conjunction with those organizations and the benefits go to all councils, districts and land trusts. So that includes the monthly webinar series that we offer. And that's been a lot of fun. Uh, sometimes it's really content specific. Uh, we had one this last week on the bidding and contracting process and best practices for developing procurement policies and that kind of thing. There's There's gotta be a niche audience for that topic, right? Um, but I will tell you that the questions were really on point and people were really engaged and uh, the the, recording has been viewed several times since then and that in my opinion is the real value because we have this library of past webinars that are available to anybody in the public and um, it's just good information on all kinds of things we have uh, topics laid out from now until next june and they're on a really wide range of things jan is going to host in um march on cabin trade sequestration, um, that we're going to have one on how to build your donor base. Um, there's going to be one on the Joint, Joint Chiefs Fire Project, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of things. Um, we're also going to be offering a Distinguished Speaker Series in 2021, and it's going to focus on speakers who can speak to diversity, equity, and inclusion topics as they relate to conservation and restoration. So I don't want to say too much because the invites are still out and have not yet been confirmed for various speakers, but that is the, the idea is to sort of thread the needle and offer this type of training in a passive way while we're still all stuck in our houses pandemic style. So that's good. And then um, we have these affinity groups. This is the thing I'm most excited about for our new deliverables. And uh, we have five topics that we have identified. Each topic will have a coordinator from the council district and land trust community. And the idea is just in a real low tech kind of way to offer time and space dedicated to specific topics. And the idea is to have uh, professionals across the council district and land trust boundaries or across geographic boundaries in Oregon to talk about those topics and be able to really build some solid collaborations and information sharing. So the top, I, uh, where it's at is that we will get the coordinators locked in hopefully this week. And then uh, next week, we're gonna do a big email push out to tell people that these are available and to start um, registering people into the groups. The five groups are going to be, and we're gonna see if I can remember them all. We have uh, tide gates and estuaries. There's a real squeaky wheel group on the coast driving that topic and it's pretty awesome. Uh, fire and conservation, um, working lands and easements, pollinators, and then a journal club for aquatic habitat restoration. So we're gonna really be, the idea is to, to, instead of doing it as one-offs or group chats or as a, one-off conference sessions to really have a way to drive these conversations in a coordinated way over longer periods of time. So I'm really excited about that. And um, I think that NALSI's headed in a really good direction and we really value our partnership with OACD and with Colt. And we're looking forward to putting together our next iteration of the grant that will begin uh, next January. 
did I touch on the topics that you were hoping I would touch on, Eric? Yeah, I think that was great. Um, that was really complete. And actually, I learned uh, more than I have ever learned. Uh, does anyone, there's a question here uh, from Christopher. Uh, says, Vanessa, perhaps I missed it, but what is the time schedule for providing the DEI sessions? That's a great uh, question. So uh, we have to spend the money in 2021. So <laughs> as soon as we get the speakers locked in, we will reverse engineer the time schedule based on that logistic fact. Um, my guess is that we will do one a month beginning in April or May. Uh, it really is going to depend on the speaker's availability and um, what what order we can roll people out in. And I'm going to, uh, it probably was implied, but this is open to all members of all the different partnership organizations, correct? That's right. Great. And in fact, I think they will be available to the public, but um, that's, a, that's who our real audience is. Great. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? If I could just say one more thing oh. is that, um, in my opinion, watershed councils are sometimes nestled right in with SWCDs and close to land trusts. And uh, in some cases, there's real long-term, beautiful, collaborative relationships built up. And sometimes those like for whatever reason, those connections haven't happened. And so if you are at an SWCD and you don't know your watershed council colleagues very well, I'd say pick up the phone and let's get that conversation started because um, Jan and I are doing a lot of work to try at the statewide level to create those connections, but it would be lovely to have that filter down through, through all of our, our organizational structures. Great. Oh, uh, where uh, where can I find more information on your webinars? I'm assuming the partnership webinars. You want to answer that, Vanessa? Yeah. Um, go to the Oregon Conservation Partnership website, and um, there's a there's a page all about the webinars, and then you'll actually see a page on the affinity groups there too. You can get a sneak peek. I haven't emailed out that link to anybody, but it's it's up there if you want to take a look. Great. Any last questions? Otherwise, we'll move on to, uh, ooh, oh, there's the link right there. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, well, we're going to move Thanks, on. Thanks, Jeremy. Jeremy. Your turn, Jeremy. Okay. Thank you very much, Vanessa. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, Eric, I, uh, uh, you mentioned that this was pretty informal, but I kind of created a presentation thinking I had about 15 minutes. Yep, you've got 15 that, minutes. You've got 15 minutes. And I'll well, make I want to make sure. Okay. Um, we're, so just cool. share. we're doing this on the fly. Okay, let's see how this works. Ooh. What are you guys seeing here? There we go. You should be able to see um, what we're seeing up uh, on the little. Okay. Well, I'm going to get started here so I can try to get through this um, a little quicker here. Good more. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jeremy Baker. I'm the president and the Portland Metro Area representative for the Oregon Conservation Education and Assistance Network. Uh, I will note on the start of this that I am not an executive director. Uh, like some of my compatriots. I am a senior rural conservationist for the East Multnomah Soil and Water Conservation District. Uh, there may be some debate about uh, whether or not I'm a good public speaker at the end of this, but I appreciate it if you can just hold tight so we can try to get you some information here. Oh. Um, I'm having troubles trying to, oh, there we go, I have to click, okay. Um, we are, are you guys seeing the slide that says uh, 501c3 nonprofit or what's on deck? Actually seeing both, uh, but I, the way you're doing it's fine. We can see what you're doing. Okay, great. I am not sure which one I'm supposed to read off of, but. Uh, okay. The uh, who we are. Great. We are 501c3 nonprofit. Uh, we are administered. Uh, we became a 501c3, I want to say around 2012, um, and uh, 
we did that so that we could try to uh, figure out ways to help uh, districts as best we could uh, in the sense of training as we're focused on being a statewide network for um, basically anything that supports soil and water conservation district staff. Um, this was the outset of us uh, becoming this 501c3. We started back around 1992 as the Oregon Conservation uh, Employees Association. So um, we've changed since a little bit since incorporating to become the Oregon Conservation Education and Assistance Network because as Vanessa discussed earlier, um, there are a lot of offices where we have uh, some direct partnerships. Um, and so we didn't want to just uh, make it just completely uh, districts only. Um, what we do, our main objectives are to provide professional development and training and networking, uh, which is a huge piece of how districts uh, staff were able, well, and councils for that matter, to um, enhance their own training and understanding of uh, options uh, that are available for not only the technical pieces of what we do, uh, but also um, staffing, policy, um, grants, and opportunities that might be out and around. Um, are you guys seeing the 11-member uh, board here of literally who we are? Yes, we see that, the 11-member right. board. Yep. I wasn't sure who was going to be on this today, and so I wanted to share this specifically to show um, just the breadth of our board, uh, not only that, but that we are all working at soil and water conservation districts somewhere in and around the state. Um, I'd also like to point out that uh, our board is um, multidisciplinary. Um, as I said, I am a, a technical person. Um, our vice president, uh, Clint, is also um, a planner. Um, Kelly Dawes is the uh, CFO for um, Wallace and SWCD um, and Kathy McQueenie uh, out of Clackamas is their one of their education and outreach uh, uh, folks down there. So we've got a great breadth of abilities uh, to to try to move our our things forward. Um, our main focus here, our mission is to be a statewide network for education, resources, partnerships, and professional development. Uh, we really want to make uh, districts stronger. Um, and we aspire to try to do that every single day. This is a lot of just general information off our webpage. But as you can see, we, when we built our 501c3, we wanted to make it as broad as we could um, so that we could provide not only assistance to district staff, but to other uh, either agencies or organizations or partners um, who are trying to advance conservation in and of itself. Uh, what we do, well, apart from uh, the incredible new employee handbook that we put together, um, I think Kelly alluded, <clears throat> for those of you that are, might not be aware of it, um, I think it's a great resource, if only just because right at the beginning uh, of the publication, we have an acronym uh, glossary that will allow you to work through the alphabet soup um, if you are new to uh, districts, councils, or um, OECD here. Uh, so apart from the handbook, we are also uh, the purveyors of the Connect training conference. Uh, that's just a quick snapshot from our webpage here. Um, and just for edification purposes, we uh, Kelly had mentioned at the beginning of this that we're kind of the four-legged stool uh, that kind of supports conservation, um, the ocean, um, OACD, uh, COLT, and now C. But inadvertently, ODA is a big part of who we are uh, as, as the Oregon Conservation Partnership. Uh, they are the organization that actually helped to create uh, the Connect Training Conference. Um, I believe it was around 2007 when they convened a uh, planning committee uh, comprised of many conservation districts uh, from across the state. Um, I know that Wallowa Soil and Water was part of that, uh, Cynthia Warnock, um, Ron Graves from Wallowa Soil and Water, 
was part of that initial setup. Uh, Janet Greenup, who currently serves on our board, was part of that setup. And figuring out if we, if there was a way for um, ODA to help districts receive training uh, that was spe specifically for uh, districts. Most of our trainings up until that point either came through SDAO, um, occasionally at um, OACD, the annual conference from OACD, uh, but uh, from NRCS as well. Uh, and so we tried to put together a conference that would provide district training uh, for districts around the things that we are doing. Um, and ODA was able to, to get that going. Uh, there was, it was heavily um, funded by the state and it was greatly appreciated. Uh, back then you used to be able to go for, for $50. Um, that things have changed quite a bit since um, 2008, I think was the first year we got it going. Uh, it was organized by ODA, but it was um, staffed and assisted by soil and water conservation district staff. Um, and there were, I do believe there were a couple of um, uh, watershed council staff who run, uh, who are uh, in, in district offices who helped put that together as well. Um, because of some budget cuts back around 2010 or 11, the recession hit. Um, and it was looking like the conference, uh, there wasn't going to be enough funding uh, to be able to put that on. So uh, Ocean decided to pick it up. Um, and ever since then, uh, we've been, um, we've been uh, keeping that uh, going ever since. Um, more specifically for the Connect Training Conference itself, it's, uh, we put together a, a training team every year. We put out a call for not only sessions, but people who might want to participate on the team so that when we deliver uh, the conference, we are sure that we have content that not only will support soil and water conservation district staff specifically, but also um, that of our partners, uh, along with watershed council staff, um, uh, OACD when they're available, Colt uh, when they're available as well. So again, we're making sure that we're touching everybody's needs, uh, but that also serves to ensure that we have the most relevant and current uh, trainings uh, to address the issues that we find in the state uh, as they are uh, developing. I just put this up real quick to, to just give you a brief uh, overview of some of the Connect conferences from uh, past years, just to highlight um, the number of, uh, I don't know if you guys can see my pointer or not, but just to try, like, try to highlight uh, the number of tracks and sessions um, that we put on uh, each year in the deep dive that we try to take in providing a broad um, uh, training experience, not only ranging from, um, you know, sort of the, the, the lighter, uh, more uh, general trainings to some very, very in-depth, very focused um, trainings as well. Here's a session from 2019. Uh, you can see that within three years, we've moved from five to seven different tracks. Um, that just kind of shows you how, how big this has gotten. When ODA first did uh, our first training at, um, in, at Canby Grove, I think we had about 75, maybe there were 100 people that attended. Um, in 2019, I think we had 300 and, uh, well, we had about 350, I believe. So it's grown quite a bit. Uh, today, um, members, uh, we are a member of the Oregon Conservation Partnership. We became, we, the partnership was formed in about 2017, um, and we've uh, been participating on that ever since. Um, right now, we're uh, putting on the final touches for Connect 2021. So it is going to happen. You hear it, you heard it here first. Uh, we are trying to finalize um, the methodology uh, and how we're gonna go about this. Um, it's a lot trickier than it seemed. Uh, unfortunately, when we had to cancel 2020, um, what we realized was we had a plethora of information that was not only timely and still relevant, uh, but we really wanted to uh, not lose all the work that the planning team we had from last year 
um, which everyone on the call here, well, all of our uh, partner representatives here participated on. Uh, we wanted to be able to bring that information forward. Um, so we're doing that. We're gonna have to cut it down a little bit, but it's there. Um, we recently received a contract uh, with uh, NRCS to coordinate trainings for NRCS certified conservation planners, whether they are um, NRCS, uh, district, council, tribal, or otherwise. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, and that's a, a bit of an uphill, uh, that's a bit of an uphill climb, at least on the front end of this. Um, and because of that, we're about to release uh, two contracts to get some uh, assistance for Ocean in delivering those services, um, along with just sort of the daily rigmarole that we have to go through. Uh, because as I mentioned on the front end of this, um, all of our board of directors are also soil and water conservation district employees. So on top of, of coordinating connect, uh, helping to coordinate connect, for instance, I also um, have a meeting uh, tomorrow on a farm to get a travel corridor put in and ensure we've got uh, culverts properly sized along with the rest of the farm plan to make sure that everything matches up and moves forward. Um, we're always trying to bring in new board members, so if any of this uh, tickles your fancy and if you are an SWCD staff person, uh, you're welcome to come aboard. Paid memberships, uh, $10 donation um, right now. Um, and I think at last count we had about 80 paid memberships. I think there's, you know, I think there's probably around 180 soil and water conservation district employees. So we've got a ways to go. But um, that's it. Other than that, well, uh, welcome to the SWCD family for those of you that are new. Um, and for those of you who are not, thanks for joining in. Hopefully, um, I did ocean justice. Um, okay. thanks, How do I re thanks very much, uh, Jeremy. That was great. Um, I am going to, so I, we're not looking at your email. You may want to stop sharing your screen. Um, I'm trying. Uh, you should be able to press the button down there that says, there you there go, you right, are. Jeremy. Great. We didn't practice that part. Yeah, we didn't practice that part. Any uh, questions for Jeremy? None? All right. Uh, well, then, uh, we will, and thanks for that presentation, Jeremy. That was really good. Um, Hope so. It was great. Uh, uh, so next, uh, Morgan Allen. Um, was just going to give a uh, short. Well, you you can give as long as presentation as you want, especially since you're my boss and I've got to treat you nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, she was going to talk a little bit about uh, ODA and our relationship with districts um, and also the conservation partnerships. All right, thanks, thanks, Eric, and uh, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, uh, I, I've just been with ODA for a year now. Um, I, I come to ODA from previously for about 15 years with the Oregon Department of Forestry, where I dealt with, a, a, I wore many hats there over the years. Um, most of the, the most consistent theme being with water quality and um, monitoring, but along the way also managed shop uh, having to do with the field support unit, which was focused on many things um, from just the operational parts of uh, receiving and processing uh, forest uh, activity notifications and supporting the field foresters in that um, compliance matters, policy, rulemaking, um, the forest health unit, so the annual aerial survey and um, uh, everything, everything that went through that. So if it's been past uh, an issue, past private forest land, most likely I had my fingers in that uh, up somewhere in the last 15 years. So yeah, your agenda um, there, Jeremy, I'm pretty sure that 2016 agenda was something that I may have done on the riparian rulemaking there. So, um, but yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, really when I was thinking about what Eric, um, 
when he put out the the theme here that you know uh, an opportunity from to hear from each organization about current activities and relationship to each other. Well, I, I thought about that and I thought, what do we all have in, in common? And it really comes down to conservation and you, uh, the districts. Um, so that's the, it in the simplest sense. Um, when the soil and water conservation districts are successful, that helps us be successful. And I think vice versa. When um, ODA's partners, you and everybody else who's been on this panel and amongst many others thrive um then we thrive as well because it, we each have our own well we, we try not to keep stay in silos those cylinders of excellence um, but there's definitely some advantages to the specialization because there's some things that others can do that we cannot uh, take lobbying as a key example but um i'll go into a little bit more specifics from there um so uh, again, what I'm I'm going to be focused on focusing on today is the soil and water conservation district and water quality programs. Um, but really, just acknowledging that with ODA, we ODA, the, I've come to learn is the a number of topics. The span of what this agency does is pretty amazing. Um, so just recognizing, in very briefly that. I know that you folks may engage with many other people in our agency, um, anywhere from insect pest prevention and management to uh, the confined animal feeding operation team or CAFOs. So, you know, I'm going to focus in on a narrow scope of what our agency does, but recognizing <clears throat> there's a whole lot else going on. So. A, a key part, of course, of what we do is what you're participating in right now uh, is the Soil and Water Conservation District support part of our function. Um, Eric, uh, our uh, wonderful host, as well as Sandy Hyatt, who's been assisted, taking, you know, hosting along the way as well. Um, plus, part of me is what uh, the Soil and Water Conservation District program is today with, with uh, um, ODA. Though, of course, you end up seeing different faces, and I'll touch on that briefly a little bit later. We provide, our goal is to provide excellent service to you folks. This training session is, is one of those uh, case in point. So we provide technical support, um, administration of OWEB grants based in the simplest sense is passed through money from OWEB, but we have an administrative role um, in delivering those dollars to you. You would have touched on some of that with the scope of work training that happened a couple times during um, this training um, session. We also, and bear with me, I'm gonna turn off my webcam. I apologize, I'm getting a signal, it's slow, and I don't wanna compromise <laughs> my talk. So I'm gonna turn off my webcam. Um, but we also we have a limited administrative oversight when it comes to the districts having to do with the formation um, or you know dissolution of districts. Uh, we don't end up exercising these very often. Things are pretty established, but they do come into play. Um, elections is another example where many of you would have um, uh, many of you in the audience would have been through that process recently, and Sandy Hyatt is our main person there. Again, what the overall goal is that you know we want to keep districts healthy and thriving, um, and reduce any liability and risk that you folks are um, may experience. So another important role that we provide is support to the Soil and Water Conservation Commission. Uh, it's nice to see Al uh, here on the screen with us. Yep, hey Al, thanks. <laughs> He's been on a number of these throughout the session. It's great to see, have him uh, join in that new role. Um, the, just to give, well, I, you're gonna, I, is Al gonna go over his role with the commission or is he showing his shining face to, I don't wanna take your thunder, Al. No? Okay. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure. I didn't think you were, but I wanted to make sure. Um, the role of the commission that we support is to give you folks uh, assistance. And um, as well, for us, they're a key partner in giving us uh, advice 
and helping us in developing policy that is beneficial to the ODA's program and to you folks. Everybody on the commission is a director in a soil and water conservation district somewhere around the state, and they represent different areas. Al, uh, for example, you can reach out to Al about concerns that you would have with the neighboring districts around the upper Willamette. So um, they're another way for you to send messages to ODA, um, but you're always welcome to call us directly as well. Um, and just mentioning quickly that on March 23rd and 24th, we did have to move our February meeting due to the uh, extensive power and internet outages we had. But you can come join us uh, in March to hear and provide important feedback on topics such as how we're doing adaptive management in our focus area initiative uh, is one case in point. Okay. Um, so I'll, I think I'll, I'm going to go ahead and touch briefly on our water quality and now Ag Channel Maintenance Program. That program, um, and you would have heard that if you joined in on Ellen Hammond's presentations on the Ag Water Quality one-on-one, -on -one, that's really what I'm talking about there. So I won't do a repeat other than skimming the surface of what she did. But there are 14 staff uh, plus part of me uh, that is involved with that program. And that consists of six regional water quality specialists, which is more likely to be your day-to-day -day, um, experience with ODA. Uh, we have one ag channel drainage specialist and seven Salem staff with a variety of functions from compliance to administrating our uh, uh, strategic implementation area work, uh, et cetera. And really what the water quality program does without doing a repeat of what Ellen covered is that we are responsible for developing plans and ensuring rule compliance to prevent and control water pollution from agricultural activities and soil erosion on rural lands. We have a, a new program uh, which came to us as a carve out of the Department of State Land Removal Fill Program. And that's the new thing that I've mentioned about ag channel drainage maintenance. Um, again, Tyler Manitza, there was a presentation earlier this week that Tyler did. And certainly if you wanna learn more about the details of that, reach out to me, Eric, or Tyler, if you look onto the contact information on our website to learn more about that. But that's an expansion to uh, the uh, activities that we do. But really, the important thing for you folks is that we accomplish this through partnership. Um, in fact, being partners with the district, it's not only a good idea, but for ODA, it's the law. Um, by statute, uh, we must involve districts in the development of these water quality management plans, of which there are 38 around the state, involving you, the districts, to the maximum extent practicable. And that's literally what it says in statute. Um, and that's really focused around the regular review and reporting of the <clears throat> on the water quality management plans around the state. But as Ellen would have covered, we have other programs to help support that function as well that are you experience through um, you know, the, the grant programs that we deliver via OWEB dollars, including the Focus Area Initiative, um, which is a volunteer, voluntary program to improve water quality. Uh, the Strategic Implementation Area Initiative, again, with you folks playing the key role with the voluntary landowner improvements for water quality. And then finally, as I mentioned, we have the Ag Channel Maintenance Program. Um, I think that that's the key topics. You know, when, one thing I do wanna mention though is that we, are working, I'm working with uh, Ocean 
and <clears throat> uh, OACD all the time. Um, I, I'm definitely coming to appreciate I need to work on extending my outreach to more folks as I get more and more settled into my, my program. But, you know, we need to keep regular communications with each other so that we don't, um, we have good, efficient contact and delivery of services to you folks and good communication so that we're not uh, being inefficient in what we do. As an example, Jeremy and uh, OACD and ODA have started talking about um, our directory. How can we um, communicate on making sure we keep a directory of, of contacts up to date um, in an efficient manner? Um, that's just one example of many, but I'll leave it there for now and I'll try to turn back on my camera and see if it will not go out on me. All right, does anyone have any uh, questions for Morgan or anyone else? Um, Eric, I've got a question. This is uh, Dean Moberg with the Twelve and SWCD. Um, and sorry, I, I possibly I missed this, but I'm wondering uh, which, if any, of the organizations presenting today can legally lobby the legislature. Part of my question has to do with um, the, the sort of, I guess, for lack of a better term, hot water that the Oregon Forest Resources Institute recently got into because they were lobbying and they're a kind of, as I understand it, a quasi-governmental agency. They're not supposed to do that, but they've been accused of doing it. So I'm wondering, are there any of these organizations, OCEAN or um, OACD, that can legally lobby? And I know that ODA could not, but wondering about the others well Jan I think that's a question for you okay <laughs> yes uh, we are a 501c6 and that's specifically because we did want to lobby and support the districts in that way um, I could hear some of your questions but not very much I'm not a, I can't turn up my sound on my computer apparently and go to meeting so if you had a, uh, if you have a specific question I'd be glad to answer it uh, I, I don't have a specific question, just just you you answered it that you can leave the OACD can legally lobby. That's what I was interested in. Thank you. Yeah, and on our website, we actually have a legislative page that any of the districts can access with all the information. I recognize your name. Which district are you from? I'm, I'm a new director with the Tualatin SWCD. Oh, OK. Yeah, um, please feel free to send me an email or give me a call and I'll be glad to work with you on that. Great, thank you, Jan. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Any other questions or comments, Jerry? Okay, okay. Eric, I was just gonna add, I was just gonna tag along on to Jan's response to Dean's question. Um, Ocean members cannot uh, we do not intentionally, uh, because we are all soil and water conservation district staff, um, there's, a, there's a line between education and lobbying, but it really, uh, the partnership has really helped us in the sense that we are able to sort of stay out of that arena and just really focus on uh, the training and professional development and networking opportunities for district staff, uh, but also um, uh, watershed councils and such. So we depend on uh, OACD um, and our uh, and our council uh, counterparts to sort of help on that end of things, so that we're aware of what's coming, so we can provide training and or um, panel discussions, for that matter, on things like forest uh, forest fires and prevention and irrigation and. There, we did have a big thing set up for the um, tide gates at 20, uh, 2020 conference, which was unfortunately canceled. So, I might share, Dean, that uh, board members of districts can lobby. There's no restrictions on board members. Thanks, Dan. Any other questions? Thank you. 
All right. Um, well, thank you all for attending and thanks for um, uh, the presenters for presenting. Uh, this has been recorded. It will be um, online probably sometime next week as a recording. Um, and feel free to uh, have any of your new other new board members or staff who'd like to see this uh, go to our website and take a look at that. Um, have a great afternoon unless I see you. Well, have a great afternoon if I see you also um, at one of the other sessions and, and uh, take care, everyone. Thanks a lot for, for attending. Thank you, Eric. Nice to meet everybody. Thanks, Eric.